Hey everybody, this is Brian. And this is Josh. Welcome to the podcast for Curiosity Continuum. Curiosity Continuum is an industry innovating, non traditional company passionate about growing wisdom in the next generation. We are the essential bridge between the analog and digital worlds by building collaborative communities that unleash the power of adaptive expertise and innovation needed to thrive in the 21st century. We combine and mix essential elements needed to empower people to succeed in new ways, not possible outside of a creative, thoughtful, diverse community of fellow curious people. Follow us on your favorite podcast app to receive notifications of new content. If you like what you hear and want to dive deeper, visit us at curiositycontinuum.com. Thanks for tuning in. Let's start the conversation. Live from my house. (laughs) Yeah, actually... We are live from Brian's house because we're together in together again. <laughs> After at quite a bit of time, actually, because I had the hurricane happen at my house. I hadn't seen Brian at that point for a while. And that's almost two years ago now. So we haven't actually been together in the same room where I could actually like shake Brian's hand <laughs> in like a while. Right. With um, with this, we want to talk a little bit about like the importance of being together in the room. Right. So um, we, our relationship as friends started obviously in like like real space and time. There right. wasn't like the option of video calling back well, in the eighties. No, no. I mean, like we, it was literally not an option. We maybe saw it on like sci-fi and stuff. We're like, well, that's pretty cool, but never even thought about it. When we uh, we have like do our video calls, like we there's a rapport that's there. We learned how to record. And even account for like the idiosyncrasies of our internet speed and stuff. Right. But there's a different rift that happens when there's like an immediate feedback loop. And not only that, but like when you see gestures, it's the whole person. Like you're in a place, like you're getting other feedback from other people as well. So sometimes it's not even just seeing the person, but it's like, where are you sitting? What are you drinking? What are you eating? What's going on? What's the weather? Right. And I also think that an important aspect of this is when we're not together in the same room and we're recording, I almost feel like we're almost like personas of ourselves. We're like the recorded, like we're like not really our normal personalities. And like, I think we're like our normal personalities are muted, I think a little bit because we know we got to do this to get the thing done to get it recorded. But when we're together, it's a little more like Brian said, like immediate feedback also, it's a little easier for us to just bounce ideas off of each other. And it seems like it's more of like the authentic, quote unquote, CC experience, I think, in that yeah. way. Because we're always big on the analog meeting the digital, not the digital, digital, analog type thing. Part of digital really is like you have a specific thing that you're setting out to do, right? You have right. something that you have to accomplish. And you're meeting for a reason. Like, you don't stumble on to like, oh, hey, I just saw my friend by chance on this planned <laughs> video call. Exactly. I mean, like, we have a, like, literally, like, when we, so when we do this normally, well, I guess it's normal now for us to be separated. But when we do that, we have a planned day, time, and we have a planned, like, topic, usually. Or we don't. We fly by the seat of our pants. But we don't really have any spontane- spontaneity in it no no it's all it's planned so like now like we came up with these topics like this morning we're talking about them for the first time really now right now so we, we don't ever have like sometimes we have a, a riff back and forth in text or something but we're not doing that so it's like we found out like i was talking to brian because we were recording a couple other things and they were shorter than we normally record and brian's and i said like well it felt like that was longer and what did you say? You said, well... So we have, when you're listening, right, it's easier just to kind of stop or mute your microphone and you can kind of go <clears throat> off off camera and come back to it and then you're talking normally. But you have that chance to think, which is honestly where I think sometimes when you're introverted and you may need to have a chance to collect your thoughts, video can actually play well into that, especially if you set rules of engagement with people so they know, like, this person speaks, we're going to give them this opportunity um, to collect thoughts, we're gonna kind of ratchet. It. It's a more controlled environment, right? Like when you're in real time, it's like driving. There is no reset button when you like get out of your driveway and start driving. Correct. You just have to keep it adjusting. Yeah, you just keep it moving and you keep it rolling. And I think that's what 
being in the real, the real, we're like occupying the same physical space is the important thing. It's like we're, it is like real life. Like if you go talk to somebody in a grocery store, it's not like, oh, wait, I did something crazy there. I got to like back it up. <laughs> and I mean, I have listened to podcasters that you can tell that they've never been in the same room with somebody. And it's not like it's necessarily bad, but it's a different cadence and dynamic. And you get a really lot of good content from these people who like just love being by themselves in their quiet space to be able to create it. And I appreciate that space, but I can't do, um, that's not the way I'm wired. No. I need to have something with a chance of interrupting me or introducing something different because it changes how I focus. It changes actually sometimes the flow, but like to me as a musician, can I sit there and play my bass by myself? Yes. Do I learn things by myself that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else? Yes, because I have the time to kind of stretch it out, to think about it. Right. When you're in a band and they count it down and they yell, uh, you know, the key of whatever, and you have to go, you better figure something out. And oftentimes, the most effective thing is to say less in those situations. Right. Because it's, you can overthink it and overtalk it, and then it just is like starts rambling. So that's the big takeaway, I think. When you're, when you're with somebody in the same space, time, space, it's a different, it's, it is different, but that's the like, kind of like almost like the true dynamic that you should have. So I want to talk about this because music is a really big deal. Right. If you talk to musicians of any vintage, they'll talk about how they used to record in studios versus how they record now. And you used to put people in a room and you had lots of baffling and things. Sometimes it wasn't great baffling, but it all sounded great. Right. And it wasn't as perfect. There was still a human element for timekeeping. You know, the metronome didn't come into the studios as like the timekeeping thing until later we hear all these recordings. Like, why are they, they sound so good and they're in time? It's like, well, they had a good sense of time. They had to develop it. And then they learned to adjust to the other musicians. So when you hear these old recordings, it's not clean, right? The drums bleed into the guitar, bleed into the microphone, bleed into the whatever. But that's, they say, well, that's part of the, experience. Now, as we've gone down the line and you've seen the ability to digitally separate things, right? There are a lot of session musicians that will never be in the same room as one another and they'll still get a great effect, right? Don't get me wrong. These are professionals that do their job well. But what's interesting to me, and I have, I've had other conversations with musicians who do some type of audio mixing, right? There's a new uh, program called, or uh, format called Dolby Atmos, you may have seen some of this like as you listen to music and stuff, right? They have these speakers that are like you perceive it to be kind of above you. And you actually can separate things out really hard. Right. That's actually in the video game space too. And it was okay. there for a few years already. So tell me what it did for you as a gamer before I tell you the music stuff. Right. So like if it's more pronounced when you wear headphones, obviously, and you have to wear like and but if it's done correctly, it can sound like stuff is really coming from like a spot of the room. It's almost like that, uh, you know, the by or, or, um, sound that you can have a special, you used to have, to have, the, yeah, yeah. You used to have a special headphones for it or a headset for it, but now it's like, they can do it with anything. And it's amazing. Really. It's like, it takes it to another level because it is like real. It's like, you're really there. It tricks your brain into thinking you are there. Yeah. At least at, for that kind of experience. So then let me come back to music. Um, what I found is that if I listen to a track by itself, man, you hear things and articulation in the instrument that you never heard before. But I talked to my friend and said, it sounds too perfect. And he said, like, let's talk about that. I said, it's so separate. Like part of when you are a musician and you have to find your sound, right? Mm -hmm. How you, how you EQ your instrument, how you pick stuff. It was because you played in context to other musicians, right? Like my sound that I put on my instrument is because I had to play with other musicians in real time and I wanted something to poke through. But now you don't have to. It's almost like a curated museum of sounds versus a band, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's literally like rec almost like recreating the mathematically perfect sound. Yes, but that's not how we perceive sound. It's not how you experience it. No, we don't because, well, we're not mechanical. 
<laughs> so like we have like a actual like inner ear that's a biological thing. So like we're in it, our brain is turning it in. It's an analog experience for us. We're turning it in. We don't have a digital brain, right? It's Not all yet. analog. No, we don't. And we don't meld the two at all. And then they're trying to, but they don't melt. Like the way they're trying to now is not like having it think for you. They're trying to like, oh, I, I can't move my arm. So I want my arm to be able to move. That's a little different than I think what. It's still primarily would. an analog system. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I can like Google something on my head and see it in my eye, you know, on a heads up display <laughs> right. or something. That's not happening yet. Yep. So. That's an interesting thing. So like like being in the same as humans, being in the same space, we're all perceiving this non-digitally. But when we're in separate, it's actually like the digital construct. And it's weird. It is weird. But we've learned, like Brian and I have learned to do it, like to get episodes out, to like do stuff, to work together. And that's easy for us. But it is a different dynamic. Now, part of the thing that you may have noticed in this episode, which I'll just peek it back, when Josh said, well, we do that in gaming, right? We kind of turned it. I took a, I stopped for a minute. He spoke, and then I folded it back in. Those are harder to do digitally, even with the blazingest speed. Because when you podcast, you have to kind of adjust your conversation cadence. But I never would have heard that in that way where it would have been a more organic conversation. Right, exactly. And I was kind of thinking of that, too, when I said that. Because if I was, I would have to wait until Brian basically f- totally finished the conversation to have that. That's that's the I- ideal thing, to have the conversation in person. So, if and I, we encourage people to do that. Like, if you can, have a conversation in person. If you're thinking of doing a podcast, have it in person, if you can. Now, you can't always do it. But at least you should have some kind of relationship built with the other person in the physical real world first. So at least you are kind of aware of how they interact with everything. So the, find somebody that you can speak to in real time and then practice it. Like just do like have an earnest conversation. We're going to talk here and we're going to talk online and we're going to see how different the outcome is in the end. Right. And have people listen to it and don't tell them and see if they notice. They may not. And if they don't, that's the key. That's what you're trying to look for. So you've got the right kind of cadence going. Should we put a comma here, Josh? Yeah, let's do it. Till next time, this is Brian. And this is Josh. For Curiosity Continuum. Thank mm-hmm. you.